Hey everyone, Mouse from Bleep Bloop Collective here with Wrong Electronics Vector Space. Per the manual, Vector Space was designed as a way to increase the usability of your modulation sources by combining three sources in 17 different combinations to give you 17 CV outputs, which are all interrelated but unique. By itself, Vector Space does very little, but combined with random voltages, envelopes, sequencers, LFOs, joysticks, and more modulation sources, it lets your patches get very deep very quickly. Vector Space is 100% analog and will process signals into and above audio rate in up to plus or minus 10 volts. So let me start by saying that this is not a review of Vector Space, nor is it a deep dive into the functionality of Vector Space. However, a number of friends had been asking me after purchasing this module, what the heck does it do and how the heck does uh, how the heck do you use it so i thought we'd do very simply is feed some inputs into vector space and use mordax data to discuss what the module is doing and so what i have here are three lfos provided by pamela's new workout which is running at a clock speed of 80 beats per minute and each of the three lfos being fed to vector space are running at 1 16th, 1 8th, and 1 4th clock time. The toggle switches for vector space are currently running in bipolar mode, plus or minus 5 volts. And each channel of Mordax data is receiving the output from vector space. And the way I'm doing this is I'm starting from the top outputs, those top, uh, those 17 outputs. And as we go along, we'll move each input to data down those 17 outputs and take a look at the differences here between what we're feeding vector space and what it's producing. And we can also mess with the clock time and do some other things to show variations and modulations. Now I purchased vector space to supplement increasing flow and texture and movement and modulation in my ambient tracks. And I have to say, I'm super psyched about this module. It's really great, but I, I can understand why people would look at it and say, how do I how do I use this thing? There's three inputs, there's three toggle switches, and there's 17 outputs, each with its its own related LED that shifts colors and intensity in rhythmic ways. And uh, unless you deep dive into the manual immediately, you might be put off by this thing. But uh, I I tend to enjoy modules with a very simple interface. And I, I have to tell you, like it took me all of about 15 minutes to fall in love with this thing. So. Anyhow, uh, we've got more DAX data in front of us, and as you can see, I have each of the four channels activated, and each of those are, again, running from an output of vector space. So the inputs are all in bipolar mode, and I'm running off the, f the, the top four outputs from vector space. And as you can see, these three sine waves coming in are, 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 being, are being changed drastically. So uh, as we look at this pattern and I shift the red lead down to another output. We can observe the change that's happening there from that sine wave to that sine wave. And if I shift the second yellow lead down to another output, you can observe the changes there. And why don't we just isolate one of those channels very quickly, less confusion. focus just on our first channel, which is our, our green lead. As I move this to another output, you can see lots and lots of change to that sine wave. And again, this is just a straight sine wave from Pamela's new workout, nothing special. You can see exactly what vector space is doing here. And we'll move again to a lower output. And if you'd like to follow along from the manual's perspective, this is somewhere at the intersection of plane and sphere inside of cube. And again, you can see some significant change there. Let's bring in one of the other channels. And we'll move that lower down, perhaps to the lower corner of our cube. I apologize for the 
patching sounds here, but I've got a single mic for this and a single camera for this. But again, you can see significant change here. And it really just has this very cool moving drift to it. Makes it very exciting. We'll activate another channel here. And then our remaining channel, going back to our full view. Just take a second to look at these patterns as they evolve. So for someone like me who's really into slow, melodic, kind of spacey, ambient stuff. This is a dream. I mean, this thing can be run from uh, Oct uh, with really slow, crawling LFOs that have their own personality and can create even more diversity and modulation uh, for one of my patches. Uh, and again, Pamela's new uh, new workout, which provides very uh, very standard waves, even, even input of a simple sine wave. You can see it's just, it's, it's going crazy. So let's uh, let's kill these channels again and focus on a single channel. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll just zoom in a little bit here to one volt. We might get some clipping. This is this is a common thing here when using our one volt scale on Mordax. But uh, again, let's start uh, let's start walking through some of those outputs with this single lead. Wow, yeah, big, yeah, just just a big story change. And so if you're someone like me who loves to drive filters, I really like playing filters with my hands, but I also love automating filters. Uh, it might be the, the East Coast part of my, of my upbringing, but I, I love doing this. Vector space is just fantastic for playing filters. Uh, it, it's also it's also really great for uh, providing offsets for quantized notes and patterns. Uh, but again, we're not getting too deep into this, but uh, just looking at our, our variations here of output, we'll come again to the center of the plane, sphere, and cube. This is our, our middle output of the 17. Completely different story. So if nothing else, without getting into a deep dive of, of uh, how each output is, is factored or calculated, and without getting into the deeper concept of a cube, a sphere, and a plane, just looking at this thing go, let's speed up our clock a little bit. To 120 beats per minute, not that that number matters much. But uh, you can really start getting a sense of how this thing moves. Now, let's go from our bipolar mode into our unipolar mode, 0 to 10 volts. We're going to see some clipping, I'm sure of it. So what we'll do is we'll scale that back down to 2 volts. And again, the second input, unipolar mode, and the third input, unipolar mode, and those changes are immediate, and we have a completely different story in terms of output. And then again, moving to another place, perhaps the top of the sphere output. Yeah, super cool. So, uh, again, not a technical deep dive, not a review of the module. Uh, I think this thing is fantastic. I'm in love with it. I, it's, it's become... Uh, for my last few patches, the brain of modulation, and I find myself feeding it LFOs most often and then running it through utilities like my Select 2 or my uh, WMD Select or even my Instruo uh, Tane. It's just a, a, just a riot to walk these 17 outputs. And again, you combine these utilities, you combine these other modules and feed it back into vector space, and then you've got this whole other canvas to work with. So what I'm going to do again here is just activate the rest of these channels. So we can see all four. And I'm just going to move them around a little bit as we watch. I'll keep a faster clock speed here so we can see the results quicker. But I'm going to flip into unipolar mode, bipolar mode on some of the toggles. I'm going to move around the space from the edges of the cube to the center, to somewhere around the sphere and the plane intersection. 
then maybe back out here to the corner of the cube and it's just it's just really cool to watch so if you're like me and, and you're into really long wandering droney stuff and really long drawn out spacey stuff this thing is killer uh, it just opens up so many possibilities and it's really very easy to use and, and like a lot of these modules with this type of approach I think the best thing you can do is just get in there and play around with it you, know, you, you can you can read the manual top to bottom and I have a few times and I think it's great but really I can sit in front of this thing for hours and just just run inputs and combine utilities and and, uh, and explore the outputs uh, now this has all been done with three LFOs uh, but another th thing I'm finding I enjoy a lot is running three outputs from an oscillator, a complex oscillator like Trident, into each input and seeing how this module treats audio signals and how it warps and modulates my oscillators. My VCOs have a completely different personality running through vector space than they would normally. And that can be pre-filter or post-filter or pre- or post-effects. Um, so that's also another area for a lot of possibilities. So yeah, anyhow, um, I don't do these videos often, but uh, I got a lot of questions about vector space and summarizing this in a broad sense. Uh, I think that wrong audio, uh, wrong electronics deserves a whole heck of a lot more attention than they're getting. Uh, I now own three of their modules, uh, vector space, sound stage, and LR, MS, MS, LR. And I'm just blown away by all three of them. They're fantastic. So this is vector space. Uh, this is a visual representation of what it's doing with three LFOs. And I hope this kind of draws a clearer picture uh, of what you're getting. And uh, yeah, so there it is. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.